Hey, what's happening, Gogo Heads? Welcome to another sized up episode of T My Gogo's One on One. I am Cato Hammond, Godfather of Gogo Media, and your host, <laughs> also known as the Bill Weathers of Gogo. Alright, but anyway, check it. I Can Mason is a drummer slash music engineer who is responsible for co-founding one of the most iconic bands in Gogo history. Optimistic Tribe, most fondly known and referred to as OP Tribe. Now, I can him and a group of his school friends in his Northeast Washington, D.C. neighborhood put together the band during the peak year of the 90, 1990s Go Go era and in a time where the wave of the music had begun gearing towards a more aggressive gangster style image. Together, they went against that popular grain and created music in lanes that still manifest to this to this very day. You know, so yes. you know. Without any further ado, please welcome Mr. Ican Mason, drummer extraordinaire. How's it going, man? What up, player? Ain't nothing to it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, how you been, man? Everything good? Family? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Same old, same old. Just, you know, maintain the order, man. Yeah. Trying to survive it. Trying to survive in Atlanta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can talk about that as well a little bit. Um, but, I mean, just to get, get into detail, basically what's going on, I, I, I try to write. As much without trying to say too much, but that uh, you know Charles Stevenson, he the one who oh yeah, that. oh yeah, Uncle Charles, man, yeah, yeah, I know yeah, 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 you know, and and and, and Ignatius, no, right. As a matter of fact, I think he did interview your father. As a matter of right. fact, right? Yeah, the, yeah, the, the beat, the yeah, all that. So he he, they, matter of fact, they used to he used to call my well, I don't know how, maybe about six months. Uh, it wasn't during the pandemic. They was trying to work on some other project. And they would just, uh, just him and some other old cats would come over just yapping. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. Yeah, I seen him. <laughs> I seen last time I seen it was over the summer. Right. Because I hadn't been out a lot of places, but when they had that that luncheon for EU at the Panorama Room, I seen it. Okay, okay, okay. So I got you. we're trying to cover as much as possible without and, it, and when you got 40 some years of, of, of history. Yep. yep. Stuff ain't, you know, some stuff is, isn't going to get caught. But one thing that I noticed, even in like different past documentaries and stuff, um, the 90s kind of always get left out. They, mm -hmm. they talk about the 80s, and they and if they mention, they'll mention back junk and NEG. Right, right. They'll jump to the bounce. Right. So I'm trying, you know, I'm trying. So, you know, I've contacted you and different, but even with Buck being out now, publicity just bands i remember and, and that's, the, it's basic. You're right, that's the thing man I, uh what trying to get 40 years of go go it's almost like you gotta talk to the fourth name well the forefathers and the people who was dead 40 years ago and if you don't get yeah. the if you don't get the information from them it's gone yeah you, exactly. you know what I'm exactly. I, I can only talk me personally i can only talk about literally 90, I was 14. So from 90 on, that's my... Right. With all that being said, with all that being said, and I wanted to get the old... Because I don't know the OP tribe story. I remember OP tribe. I remember the first time I seen them. It was... Listen, you ask the questions, I'll give you the answer. Okay. All, right. All, right. <laughs> all right, so basically, let's start from, from the beginning. Right. When did OP... When? What, what year? When? 
Okay, well, I gotta, I gotta go back. It's like I gotta go back to come to come forward. Okay, right. so me and Arvell, watch the keyboard player. Okay. We were named, you know, his father. Well, his, we family. My father, his uncles, and all them was in a band called Distance. So now I've been knowing Arvell since shit two years old. Five, you know what I'm oh, saying? Wait a minute. So his father too. His uncle, Uncle Michael Watts, okay. played guitar. Okay, all right. So his, so that's a they. You know, we all live on. My father live on Eleven I Street. They live on Tiffin G. So that's the that's that that Eighth Street corridor no, neighborhood. So all I've right. been knowing Arvell for all my life. So right. we started a band, no name, in like <laughs> I mean like eighty, uh, maybe eighty six. Okay, and he was the keyboard. I was the drummer. So we didn't have no name. The first name we had was Raw Deal. This is the people who know. It was Raw Deal. Okay. Then we was the Untouchables. Like, you know, you just go through different names. Raw Deal. Then you go to Untouchables. And, you know, it stayed Raw Deal for a long time. And then the Merlin band, Raw Deal, caught traction before we did. And when, when my father heard, heard that, he was like, nah, you can't, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it don't work. Now he's, you know, he in the music, so he know, that ain't gonna work. Two bands go to law. He came up with the name Optimistic. That's it, like okay. out the blue, Optimistic. So we was like, all right, you know, kid, like, okay. So let's say 90, I graduated middle school in 90, in 90, yeah, got about 90. That's when Peeny comes in, because <laughs> Peeny went to Elliot with us, all right? So we changed so our name to Optimistic. What middle school? I'm, I Elliot, 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 yep. okay. Elliot, Elliot, Elliot Junior High School, yep. Okay. All right, so 89, let's say 88, 89, we're just optimistic. Okay. All of a sudden, Scooby comes. <laughs> so this is, they all in that same neighborhood. We all with the Elliot, blah, blah, blah. So now we're optimistic. Me, Arvell, Penny, Scooby. Now, a couple of my homies in the neighborhood would just do front line and say little stuff, but it wasn't no traction. It was just, you know, whatever. Right. All of a sudden, I moved to Rhode Island Avenue in 1991. That's when I went to McKinley Tech. Tech, McKinley, all right. And six doors down is a guy named Solly Williams, <laughs> AKA okay. E. Now, right. You could, here's the story. I'm minding my business in the in the in the in my in my uh in my backyard playing basketball. Uh -huh. Out of nowhere, he comes down the alley and just grabs the rebound. This is a true story. They didn't say hi, didn't say nothing. I'm like, hey, cuz, what's up with that? And I just went in the house. Right. We go to school, he's in my English class. So I'm like, all right, cool. Our first we didn't have homecomings. We had like plaza party. That's where DJ CeeLo went. He went to McKinley with me. Oh, okay. He was a senior when I he was a senior when I was a, a, a freshman. He would just DJ on the on the on the on the plaza. Bands would come, and that's when I saw E in the band Young, uh, Young Production. Okay. Off the break, I said, "Bruh, I need you in my band." That's how E got the band. <laughs> so now it's me, Arvell, Petey. Scooby on the front line and E on the front line. Okay. The, the next practice, he brings Tony Reyes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Right. Then, because we only had one keyboard player, Arville and Arville went to Easton with Mac. So he brings Mac. So now it's me, Petey, Arville, Mac, Scooby, E, and Tony Reyes. That was the band. 100 percent We played everywhere. Right, you know what right. I'm saying, and then because my you know my father's Afrocentric, but uh, he added the tribe to it. It was just optimistic. Uh huh. And when he, when he added the tribe, it was a rap. Okay, and and, I mean, and 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 so you spelled it that way, the optimistic that way. I guess created like just be yes, because you yeah mysterious. Right, right. We put the Y in it for mysterious. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Oh, yeah. So okay, now I want to get because I want to. What is what is um Peeny's real full name? All right, Peeny's real full name is Delano Bowden. Bowden, B O W D E N. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And um, yeah. and you say um Mac? Who's Mac? 
Mac is the keyboard. He's a he's a keyboard player for Black. He used to be with Black Alley. Okay. Oh, okay. Dark skin okay. guy, Dustin yeah. guy with the glasses. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. So that's about 1990. You say? 91. 91. Yeah, really? Yeah. Okay. It's real talk. 91. Okay. This is when the full when, when optimistic tribe. Uh, as as you know, optimistic tribe. That's ninety one, and right. then from 91, 92, 93, 94, That's when we was just playing this. You know the Unifest, the Marvin Gaye days, the you know anything. Okay, but so it, it, well, no good. Um, oh well, I I just because all this like I said, and yeah, I'm saying, this is why this is why I chose to do it this way. I got you. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. So, all right, so. So the schools you went to was McKinley Tech and Elliot Junior High school, school, right? Nah, okay. So watch this. This go this this is another funny part. We all hold on. I gotta say we, me, Vail, Penny, Scooby, we all went to Elliot Junior High. Okay. The only one that went to McKinley Tech High School is me and Sali. Eat me and eat. Okay. Everybody else in the band went to Easton. Okay. Except Tony Red, I think Tony Red went. He was in. He was living in Maryland by then, so I don't know his actual high school he went to. But he didn't. You know, he didn't go to Eastern or okay. the okay. So okay. that's why when we have we have talks. It's like, bro, y'all with the we all with the Eastern. We went to McKim. It is what it is. All right. So, and okay. So so we talking during that period, and right. I guess the based on the part of town you, who were, what made you be well. Because at that time, everybody was a go-go band, I'm sure. So what inspired you to, but you come from a father, a history of before right. go-go. So what inspired you to make it go-go, besides probably Pierre and everything else? What else? Junkyard, bro. I just had this conversation yesterday. Junkyard uh, band is the reason why 99% of the bands out there. Because the forefathers is, you know, that... I can go back to the young senators, all that, but the forefathers, Chuck Brown, EU, Trouble Funk, Red Essence. Right. 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 And then There's under that, you know. Yeah, yeah, man, right, right. And then under then under that umbrella, you would have the Northeast group where Junkyard is like the grandfather. That's our grandfather. Northeast and Backyard is our fathers because okay. you either came from a Northeast tree or you came from a Backyard tree. That's just that's how it's broken down, right. and you can tell by the sounds. So yep. because I saw Junkyard and DC Cab, oh man, I had to do that. That's just it was like really, and then you see uh, Saudi, and you see them on M Street, like you just at that yeah. time you're like, hey, bro, these kids doing this because you always see the adults doing. It. Yeah. That was my. That's all of our inspiration, Junkyard. And that's and, and it's funny because that's why I myself. I always refer to junk as the leaders of the new school. Yep. For yep. Exactly what you said. Because I remember me personally, just and we ain't gonna be talking about me, but I just want you to know. <laughs> um, I remember the first time I ever seen junk, I was working with Mass Extinction. Okay. And Mass Extinction was playing up one night up Northwest Gardens. All right. And what Mass Extinction used to do. That a lot of I don't know a lot of bands did. Mass Extinction used to try to um, they used to try to make their shows like events, so okay. they would invite other acts to perform while they taking a break and stuff. Got it. And one of the one act they had in, to play was Junk, and wow. and um, they were on the stage. Junk even played. Junk didn't play no more than maybe ten minutes. Okay, I remember. Cause they were, you know, they were young, younger, right. much younger, right. and um, but I remember how the crowd bugged out about these little kids and how they playing on, you know. Huh? So, and yeah. so I seen them come through the eighties, and but I did, I did notice all the bands that came through the nineties mm -hmm. all loved junk. Yes. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Everybody loved that was that just that whole new generation. That's, that's, that's go, they, right. They are our inspiration. They are our godfathers. <laughs> like you said, Chuck Brown to me at that at that time, it was just the older guy. You know what I'm saying? He's the but junkyard is like, oh my god, <laughs> like oh my god. They they are our celebrities. You know what I'm saying? Well, even even I can even say 
for me, you know, the way you looked at junk was the way we looked at right. grasses. Right. Because it, back, back then, even we were too young to see Chuck. Mm. Chuck was my father with this. Yep. Yep. Come on. <laughs> so, and then yeah. we got old enough to see Chuck too, you know. But, you right, 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 right. Nah, it was, it was an essence, but, you know, but anyway, okay, so we're talking, all right, so we're talking 91. Mm -hmm. And um, so how did move, you know, how did, how did, uh, so as the band begin to continue, you know, how, how did Mike get in the back? Because I'm going to tell you, the first all time right. I've seen you, I'm going to just let you know when we get to that right. and you can walk me to The first time I see you, seen you, I was with prop utensils and we all were right. playing at the Ibex. Yes, and sir. I, all right. <laughs> all right. So you, stop right there. Okay. Stop right there. All right. So here you go. So, like you said, me, Peeny, Scooby, E, Tony Reds, da, 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 da. So, E brung Taco in due okay. to his young production days. When he was playing with Buggy and keyboard Tony and all that, so he right. brought Taco in as the singer. So we had we had E as the talker, Lee Mike, Tony Red was the rapper, and then Scooby and Taco were the vocalists. Right? When we was at the Ibex at this particular time, Mike got in the, well. It was a the whole listen got in the group. Like we <laughs> we had, at this we had. About six people on the front line, bro. This dude. Right. Okay. So he, yeah. so Scooby just brought the rest of the group on the stage. And they would just sing a song or two. And then they would never leave. Like real talk. Oh, they come up. They, okay. You, you get my point? So at the Ibex, you would see them sing, right? Yeah. And they just would never leave. But it's all good. We family. So it's okay. Right, 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 right. As time went on, Tony Reds, my father was strict on like schoolwork and all that. So if you if you ain't do good in school, you couldn't play. That's right. just real talk. Right. So when Tony Reds decided, you know, he didn't do good in school or whatever the case may be, Mike would just continue to be there. Okay. Just to fill in the void. You know what I'm saying? So right. at the end of the day, we would have Scooby, E, Tony Reds, Mike, and Taco. Okay. And that was the front line for years, for years, for years, for years. And then, you know, as time go on, we all do our thing. But that's how Mike stayed. Tuffy and O, they just wasn't strong enough to stay in the go-go. Because see, Tuffy and O was not in a go-go band. Right. Mike yeah, was in Sideshow. Yeah. There you go. So Tuffy and O didn't understand the nuances of go-go. They were just gospel singers. You know, gospel army. Mike right. was in a go-go band, so he understood the, the nuances of go-go. To slide in, do his part, yeah, that's all. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Okay. okay. When did you guys realize, okay, this young getting serious? Or was it always that way with you? All right. That's a, that's a good question. Serious to the point of understanding music and knowledge was once we started playing at the Ibex every Tuesday. Here's why. Because before it was just here, there, everywhere, here, there, everywhere. You know, Big Butch shows, Joe Clock shows, blah, 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 blah. Unifest here, blah, 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 blah. But now we got a show every Tuesday in front of the backyard. Now, don't get it twisted. It was maybe two people in the room, bro. Mm -hmm. And after week after week after week after week, it started going from two people to 20 people. And I'm talking about literally the crowd will come for early just to see us. So now you know, now you say to yourself, oh damn, this real. Even backyard would come early. Backyard might have to come on at, let's say, they might came on at 12. I just used 12 o'clock. Uh, they would get there at 10 o'clock now. Okay. So that's, you get my point, like, okay, we making some noise, even if it's just one day a week. <laughs> right. right. Crowd coming early to see us, they paying to come early. And then the band is coming early too. Oh nah, we got it's, it's it's real real in the field. Now as far as music is concerned, the music was always serious because my father and his crew, you know the OGs, they would always come in the rehearsals and be like, nah, I don't do this. They would they we had creative control, but at least they'll give their insight. Like right, right. 
you know, do this and do that. You know what I'm saying? So the music part was always important. Or so serious. your father was always the manager who handled the business and stuff? Oh, yeah, 100%. Okay, okay. 100. That's what I wasn't sure, too. Okay, how long here? All right, we start. Okay, we started off on 11 Nine Street, and then when I moved to Roll Island Avenue, that's when we, you know, in the basement of Roll Island Avenue. And because he's my father, he took on a managerial role. Even though he was, he always say, I'm not the manager, you're the manager. And then right. we had to get our own sound system. I mean, think, think about it. We talking about back in the day where either you or they're going to allow you to use the sound or you're going to have your own sound system. I was so about, get, I'm about to say, what made y'all decide? Because this, this, this is around the time when bands almost was stopping. Yep. That wasn't a, being a priority for bands that had their own sound system. Right around right. that time, it was starting to happen. So, what made y'all, I guess, because decide like, that's, that's what he's that's what I'm saying. Okay, just a man, I'm gonna keep, keep it 100. Right. We done played on shows with Red S's, and they wouldn't even let me use the drum seat. It's a drum, the drum set is there, right? But they yeah. wouldn't let me use the drum seat. Or we'll be on a show with another band, and there's no engineer. It's like, well, shit, who's gonna run the sound? You know what I'm right. saying? Like, these are little things that we don't know. We kids. Yeah, we like, you learn. You learn. Yeah. And my father, like, nah, we ain't going through this. So he just started building his own sound system up. So when we have our own little backyard shows or we get on our show, we ain't got to worry about it. Right. That's you know what I'm saying? It's just you learn as you go along because of the the politics and go go. There you go. Do you remember your very day. first show? Nah, bro. You know what? <laughs> okay. Okay. Right, real talk, hold on. Oh no no no! I got one. No, I can, I, I ain't gonna say first or, show or, or one of this one of your first. Yeah. Uh, damn, I got to think. Which now watch this. As optimistic, one of our first shows probably would be Unifest. As the optimistic that the people know, that's what I'm saying. Right. As the people that know optimistic, optimistic, it would be the Unifest. Well, yeah. So that would be like Unifest '91 because you know Unifest was big every year '91. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it would be like Unifest. We would look forward to Unifest, Marvin Gaye Day, Georgia Avenue Day. Right. <laughs> all, all those big days, that was our, yeah. We okay. done played at Sherwood Wreck. We done played at all these other wrecks. So you get what I'm saying? Right. And then no we became... Words, wait, wait. Go ahead, go, no, keep going. Nah, then we became the band that didn't cuss. That was, that was strategically on purpose. Okay, I didn't know that. Okay, I didn't know that. Okay. Oh yeah, oh yeah. When Solly, when E and Tony Reyes first came, literally in the uh, in the rehearsal, they motherfucking man, they cussing. My father was like, oh, 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 we don't cuss. Real talk, real talk. We don't cuss in it. We don't cuss in this band. And E is Tony like, what? It took a real talk. It was like, what? So time go on, they would start rapping or saying stuff, and they would slip. And be like, oh damn. And then that's if you know this right now, just think about this. Mm -hmm. Scooby, E, God rest Tony Reds, they all have success, they all have success in radio or some capacity and don't cuss. Right. That's mentally trained to, <laughs> to don't cuss. Okay. So okay. so because we didn't cuss or say provocative words, real talk. We my father, this is his line. Could you sing that to your grandmother? Right. And they be going, damn. Could you say that to your mother? And they be like, nope. So we became the band that had, we did all the schools, sit well friends, and you hear what I'm saying? Because we're the band that don't cuss. Even though it's go-go hard, it's go-go yeah. heavy. Yeah. We don't cuss. And, and which is, which is uh, and, and that's a good point. Which is during the era where cussing became stronger in Go Go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, the Go Hard era, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? The gangster era. Yep. Um, so that, but I didn't know, I knew Wichicom was known as a band that didn't cuss. I didn't think about it. I knew the um, Hunger Bucks was known as a band that didn't cuss. And where you, you think they got, hold on, where you think he got it from? <laughs> that's interesting. I mean, that's what I'm saying. See, this is the kind of stuff I'm saying. It's very, Interesting. Okay. Right. Where you okay. think you got it from? And, and 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 it's interesting even more to know that 
you got you got mentors like Ignatius, and they had a mentor like Charles. like Charlie Fifth. Yep. Yeah, you know, so that makes sense. God and them two, it. and them two used to talk all the time. Okay. Wow. So that's, okay. that's what I say. That's that backdoor. That's the backdoor conversations. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yep. All okay. the time. Really, really interesting. All mm -hmm. right. Um, some people, I'm going to go, I got one question, but I got one question before that one. Really? What were, would you say, some of your most popular grooves? Oh, all right. Let me, let me, man. It's gonna so, be crazy. It's, it's gonna be it's gonna be my personal, but I gotta get it. I'm not gonna take it personal. So hold on. Right. <laughs> uh stick shift. Okay. Overdrive. Uh well stick shift, stick shift would be well the subs, the sub line, the sub name would be my name is Scooby, but we call we as the band call it stick shift. The crowd would call it my name is Scooby, because it's the same song. Okay. Uh stick shift, my name is Scooby. Uh, overdrive, black coffee. That was my joke. I like that. that uh, thirty minute workout. Damn, I'm trying to go down the list because that's how we had to do for the reunion. We was like, okay, what we not gonna play? Real talk. Even when Tony Red, when Tony Red's tribute, we was like, uh, we ain't got but an hour, so we gotta figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. Uh, and I know the band gonna kiss, cuss me out. <laughs> uh, that's about it. I can't think of no more. I mean, I can think of more, but the best ones it would be those. But yeah, you did. Leave oh my bad. One, bad. one, one last one. Oh shit, my bad. The one that get the throw your hands in the air. We call it. We call it ninety five, but the crowd call it hands up. That's the one. Hands, okay, yeah. but you left out the dirty bird jump. You know why? Hold on, I'm gonna tell you why I left it out. Uh -huh. It's I, it's one of my favorites. Don't get it twisted. Right. But we don't do it a lot because it was at the damn it's an interesting story about that. Okay. Yeah, let me hear it. Let's hear that. You gotta think it's 19, literally 1999. Yeah. Prince is alive, and Prince sent out a letter or words or whatever back then wasn't no social media. He said if anybody redo, copy, <laughs> sample 1999. He's suing AA, right? Yeah. So you, when we did the song, we released the song as the X-Men. Okay. Because we didn't want it to come back to OP Tribe or Optimistic Tribe. So that's the record that it came out on, we did it at Crispy On though. It it says X-Men on it. So even if someone was to put it in a catalog and write OP Tribe, it's cool, but we made sure that we didn't have no attachment to it legally. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't want that smoke. Uh, and y'all, Chris, Chris Biano, I don't know when he was in the Glendale area or yep, yep. Uh, the one, nah, Bells, I think it's Bellsville. Out in that area. Okay. Yep, okay. yep, yep. He sure did. Uh, Chris uh, Biano, yeah. called it x -Men. But no, that's one of my favorites. Yeah. And it's, don't get me wrong, you're right. It is a crowd favorite. We just don't do it. I don't know why. It ain't a why. Yeah. It's just we don't do it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. All right. Now, was this before the awakening or after? The awakening came out in God name, two thousand three, ninety two. Nah, that came out. Well, that's uh, something. It's not that's something I can look up as well. You know, right, right, right. Man, you got me thinking, man. Hold on. <laughs> well, when you say when you say what came before what, that was saying what's the question again? Yeah. No, well, what's I the mean, question? no, because I didn't, I didn't know about the dirty. You think y'all released the dirty bird? That I, I just. Oh, oh yeah, 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 that, yeah. The dirty, yes, the dirty bird came out before the awakening because it was just called the X Men. Right. We literally released it in 1999. Okay. Yeah, I didn't. I, okay, I didn't know that. Okay, I just knew it is. It was a job when y'all played live. You know, or it's from uh, tapes or whatever. And they, I oh yeah, you know, us, you know. But no, we went tapes. to the studio. We recorded on the two reel, and we printed out about two hundred records, and we mm -hmm. start giving it to the DJs. But it had X Men on it. So the letter came from Prince to y'all, or just in general, y'all? No, the letter came to the the world. Like he put it out in the world. Okay. <laughs> right. So you know, you but see, that's the thing. We my father always told us. Even though to 
some bands go go is small, and you might look at it like it's only in a city. You don't know how far this song gonna go. Right, that's true. And you put Optimistic Tribe on it, 1999, and just so happened his cousin hear it or somebody hear it. Now he oh, goes, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We was and like, nah, especially you know he had cats in his band from Go Go. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. Okay, like so we said, no nope, X Men. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We just put a big X on it, X Men. Nope. Wow. Okay. So yeah, that, that so now that you give me the date, so yeah, 1999. So the, so the awakening came out in 2003. Oh. On Thump Records at on Thump Records, Charlie Fenwick. Really? Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I had that CD, but I didn't. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't pay it to whatever. But okay. All right. So we moving. We moving. I guess. I don't want to say things imploded. When did you? When would you say you reached your you reached your peak? Uh. Probably between ninety nine and two and and two thousand three, because that at that time, Ibex closed at ninety seven, and then we were just on all back like backyard. That's family, so we were whatever show they do, we did whatever show yeah, they did, we did. It. You know what I'm saying? So when I and saw we, y'all, so, so when I saw y'all on the on the right, it would be now we're talking, you know, Metro Club jumps. Um, yeah, Metro right, Metro Club, and then again at at one point. We were the band, like I said, because we didn't cuss. We was on another circuit. We would do all of the private schools. The I was gonna, that was going to be a question. Can uh, you name some of the schools y'all did? Oh, my God. Okay, you got me going back. Okay. I know you say sit well. Sit well, friend. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, dog. You got See, if I had these questions before, I would have had them already. I didn't know, I didn't know uh, what I was going to ask. I'm going to be honest. I know, I know, I know. Uh, and, and here's the wild part. I'm sitting here thinking... What would pressing at? What would pressing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> okay. Like I said, dang, I can't think of the names, but I know we did a racker. We did Hood College. We did, uh, uh, of course, Eastern Shore, Townsend. But a lot of them, a lot of them, I, I know it was a lot of them Northwest private schools. I don't know how we got hooked up with them, but all of them, like. Bethesda and Rockville, yeah, we was up there. Okay. But it was like I said, that's a circuit that no bands were doing. If let's say, let's say the band wanted junkyard, I don't remember the show, but the band, right. the school wanted junkyard, and right. the principal was like, nope, and they called us. Okay, you, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I get told you. because okay. we were the safe band, the band that did cuz and blah 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 blah. So now here's here's a real good question because. Opie Tribe is one of those bands, and you got a few that way. I mean, I'm going to name just a few, right. like Opie Tribe, or a few stand up. Opie Tribe, Razzis mm -hmm. is one, NEG is one. Uh, the, probably a handful where you have the most members who continue successfully over mm -hmm. the years in Gogo, -Go, whatever it mm -hmm. was. And right. on the music scene, period. You know what I'm saying? Right. So did OP Tribe ever break up or did folks just get busy with other projects? But still, you know. All right. That's a great question. Oh, that's a good one. No, we never broke up. Cause Yeah, that's, and, and that's something that just popped in my head because I'm like, you know what, I, I wonder if these guys ever broke up because they <laughs> no, right, right. I, I ever officially broke up. You know what I'm saying? No, no, no. no we, just, watch it. Here you go. Here you go. Watch this. No, we didn't break up. In about 2000, all right, here, damn, you you making me go deep. Okay, whoop, boom. The Awakening came out in 2001 because Listen was hot as fish grease in 2002, 2003. You making me go back. Here we go. So- okay. About 2001, I left the group. I'm just, I just got tired of, tired of it. It wasn't no beef. It was just, I'm done. But then I thought about it. I said, hold up. How am I going to leave my own group? <laughs> this is real. This is real. Right. I said, I can't leave my own group. So when I left, they start having drummers here and there, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, it still didn't make sense. I'm leaving my own group. Like, it was real. Anyway, so... Uh -huh. 
once I left, you can say it dismember, but it didn't dismember. Everybody just went to listen. See? Right. That's how listen was formed. Not because I can't wasn't there. It was just, well, we ain't playing nowhere. We ain't doing nothing. Let's just form a new band. Listen is born. But E kept the band going with Preston. Right. That's okay. when you got the Deos and the, oh, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. There you go. So we never broke up. We just, you know, you get tired of each other. Like, man, uh, and then you start going doing your other thing, your, your own thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tony Riz in radio now. Yeah. And he was doing street team work long before he got into on the air himself. Yeah, me, me, you know, him, and, and e, me and him and E was this, was on the same street team at WPGC in, okay. in 2001. Okay, yeah, I remember. That's why that. I said 2001 is the date that, I ain't gonna say it's not a breakup. We just start doing our own thing. That's my point I'm making. But we would always come back if need be for whatever, whatever. And that's what I mean by when I said that, because even still to this day, you got members from that group who are still active. Uh, the group was called Smooth and Subtle. It was a six-member okay. group, like um, like like uh, what's the what's the what's the Brian McKnight brothers? Damn. Oh, uh, um, uh, uh, Take Six. Take Six. You're right. Yeah. That's what they were. Then one member leaves, and it turns to a five, and blah blah blah. blah. Oh, Smooth yeah. and Subtle. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah. One member leaves and then one got killed. So that turns into the four members. Scooby, Mike, O, and Tuffy. Like I said, I, got, I know the story because I was there. Uh-huh. Smooth and subtle, smooth and subtle. And then after they, after they got matured, my father's DC tags were listen. But it was spelled the right way. L-I-S-T-E-N. Okay. He just put listen on his tag. He had them shits on there for five plus years, right? Right. They saw the name and changed it to L E S S E N. I'm just right. this is history. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. And that's that's how the Listen band became Listen in 2001. They just added a they they was a singing group and they just added OP Tribe as the band. Okay. Ran up to Coma Station once or twice. Yeah, I remember that. I remember I'm that. just saying, I'll give you the history. Now, yeah. Mike is the one that could give you more detail because Mike was in the conception of Listen To. Now, now some of these pieces that I'm writing for the book are uh, 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 just be- taken from past interviews that we, we've done. Right. right. Um, and like the Air Raid one I'm finishing now, that was a, a joint. That, matter of fact, that Mark and Preston did at your spot. Okay, okay. It interviewed Air Raid because you, I'm listening to it. It's, it's online, but you're in there. Now, hold on, hold on. Now, here's the thing. If you need, if you need me to, um, I, mean, I ain't, I ain't that. If you need, I got all those interviews still on my computer. I just uh-huh. got to try to, if I can, when I find them, I can just send it, you know, send you. Oh, I got them. I got them. Oh, you got them. Okay, 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 okay. As a matter of fact, I may have them all up on YouTube. I got um, you. I got you. Yeah, got yeah, you. and and that's how I know you. That's how I know it was there, and you were there because they in that interview with Ray with Doc Doc and A from Ray, they yep. mentioned you. You sitting in the room with them. Um, <laughs> so so yeah, so, yeah, um, so but and I remember it. They would even be from there or the earliest stuff we did. Because for example, we've had even over here when we had the other uh, radio junk. The uh the first radio joint, we we've interviewed Yanni, but it was only mm-hmm. about her. We've interviewed Mike you. and um what's his name? Keyboard player from Listen. Um oh Mo? Was it Mo or oh, Avil? No, Mo, 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 no, Mo, Mike yeah. Mo. And uh, mm-hmm. but that was during the split up with the, the listen versus the group. So yeah, I, I think the topic was about that, but never the history. <laughs> and we've interviewed Scooby, but it was about when he left, I got you. listen to go and play with Donnell. You right, know? I got, I got, so I got what you saying. He left to go and play with Donnell. Right. So, um, but we never talked about the, the listen story itself. So, okay. All right. So now, want to get into, now we're talking, um, people going in different directions. How many reunions have you, have y'all gotten back for? You know what I'm saying? Were they reunions? Were they 
just re reunion spots or were they for the the idea of maybe we're going to get this thing back going? All right, here we go. The first official reunion was 2012, September 22nd, 2012. And that was because we, had, we hadn't been together 10 plus years. I mean, everybody doing their thing, but as a group, no. So that was the first official reunion, September 22nd, 2012. And then we started doing weeklies at Murray Goes. But then, you know, Murray Goes, that, that disappeared or whatever. And that was it. We were done. Not done, but we just, everybody doing their thing. Right. The, the last reunion is when Tony Reyes passed, so we had to do something. That wasn't even a no brain. And that was the one that was done at the outside zone, right? What was that? Uh, no, nah, the, the one we, the one at the the student, the one uh in twenty. Oh, the, the stream zone, yeah, did not, did not. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. We had to do that. That wasn't even, we ain't even, yeah. It wasn't yeah. even no thought. It was okay. He gone. Nope. We're gonna do a fundraiser. Boom, boom. What we gonna do? Two days of practice. We're going to play this. We're going to play that. Cool. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? Right, <laughs> like, right. we know each other. That's, we know each other. Man. So everybody doing that. What made you go down south? Was it just a, 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 a move or was it a music move? No, it was a, it was a family move. That's just even like that. It was a family okay. move. Okay. I moved okay. in. No, I really did. I just moved in 2005 at the time. It was a family move. And at the end of the day, I wear go-go on my back. So I just found the go-go band that was down here called EXO. EXO, yeah. Okay. I, ironically, they had a show. This dude, it was one of the most, okay, we don't do this in D.C., but I, I guess cuz didn't care. It was like 15 bands on one show. Mm -hmm. Like He grabbed some from North Carolina. He grabbed some from Florida. And I became the engineer for the whole show. I'm like, all right. And in that band, 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 I was like, hold on, EXO, that's the band here. Mm -hmm. Talked to the little owner, or you know, the manager, and that's how I became the drummer for EXO. Cause I, cause, and this, this is no, I am the mayor of Crank Lantern. Cause everything that came through here, here we go. So okay. 2005, I moved down here. I become the drummer. Mm -hmm. I'm like, cool. I see that the band got only one other go-go person, and that's the kunga player. But everybody else is church, jazz. I'm like, nah, this ain't going to work. Uh, I heard that Ricky was down here. Ricky from the Hucklebucks. Okay. I called him up. Hey, bro, you down here? He was like, yeah. I said, be at rehearsal next week. He comes to rehearsal. That's done. <laughs> Ricky, you lead the front. I lead the back. XO, 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 XO. We play here and there. Woo, woo, woo. The band, this 2000, in about 2000, no, my bad. I moved to 2005 and I came back in 2008. When I came back in 12, mm -hmm. it was no longer the band no more. So we created a new band called Off Script. Ricky, right. oh, I get Ricky. By this time, Ricky's Rick, Ricky Chiefy's living here from the Hucklebucks. He's on drums. Um, Kyrie living here. I put him on bass. Mm -hmm. I'm just finding everybody. Oh, you live here? Oh no, you gonna be in this? Band. Right. You gonna be in this band? And then when Chiefy left to go back to DC, I became the drummer. So I was the sound man and the drummer. Okay. No big deal. It's all good. Yeah. Okay. Let me see. You. Do you? I got two more questions. No, nah, go ahead. Do you? Do you feel? And is that a you know number? Do you feel that um, OP Tribe never really got their just due? Yep. He, he, it's and, a, and the reason I'm asking that because I feel that that's why I'm asking you. You know, um, I guess what makes you feel that or whatever. Or, all right. You're just your take on that. Oh, no, this is real. This is the take. <coughs> in the 90s, like you just said, was the hardcore era of Go-Go, when they start introducing hardcore lyric raps and blah, 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 right? Mm -hmm. Big Butch said this, and I, you know, you ain't got quoted, but Big Butch said this to my father. Uh -huh. 
Man, you can't be y'all can't be bringing that Chuck Brown sound in here. Man, what does that what does that what does that mean back in the nineties, right? Man, y'all yeah. can't be bringing that Chuck Brown sound in here, right? <laughs> too clean, too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think that hurt us because we were the the the, the too clean guy. Like we was the okay. clean comedy. There you go. We was a, we was the clean comedy. Clean comedy. <laughs> the Will Smith. And, Right, right, right. We're, we're the clean comedy in a world of hardcore, hardcore rap. That's just real talk. And, you know, we wasn't going to change who we were just to fit in. You know what I'm saying? Nah, it ain't, yeah. it ain't like, nah. I'm not going to start cussing and start saying stuff just to fit in. Nah, no. Yeah. Wow. So, and, and that's just one episode. Then we've, we've heard by the promoter. Uh -huh. Said bands uh, said if y'all playing, they not playing. And what yeah. does that mean? Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm saying the same old shit. Okay. okay, right. But you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. God damn, we just come, we just coming to do us, bro. And our philosophy was always, we want to come on first. We right. never wanted to end. I mean, I'm not. You're not saying like if you if we if you're gonna put us on a headline. That's cool. But we never cared about starting the show. Never. Right. Till this day, if we was to come back tomorrow morning, we would tell promoters put us on first. We don't care. Right. We're gonna do. What we're gonna do. That's that's the mentality you're supposed to have. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. So so in the recording thing. Right. How many projects? I know about the waking and now and I know about the uh see this is what I'm saying. I forgot the name already y'all use. The um right. what did you say, Transformer? What do you say? The 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 uh oh, the X the X-Men. Yeah, the X-Men. Okay. Yeah. Any other projects after and I know about well, I, are you part of the um the joke that E put out? The uh E of o, his solo joke. I am the sole executive. Well, me. Preston is the executive producer, and I am the producer of the whole CD. I produced okay. it, mixed it, mastered it. Yeah, so that's, yeah, I'm a part of it. Okay. And I, you know, I did the cover. Okay. Yeah, you were right. <laughs> so we all, we all a part of it. Sure. Yeah, yeah. They hit me to do the cover. Um, okay. Right. Um, we all a part of it. All right. So, so to so, answer your question, so to answer your question, OP Tribe has one official recording project literally just one official one because uh -huh. that's all you know x-men is not officially out but even though dirty bird is out you know but right, we have right. one official full album yep okay that's it all right are you playing now just curious or are you playing, just uh, you no, no 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 i'm not playing i'm not playing i'm not playing for the band no not, i'm just I'm saying not playing in general there, so. Right. Okay. Oh yeah, general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm doing. I'm focused more on the engineering side, though. You know yeah, I mean? that's what I know too. Okay. Yeah. All right. That, that may be all the questions I have. Um, man, you can ask as many as you want, Caleb. Yeah. I guess. I guess that brings us up. But those the main point. Like I say, this. Well, look. If there's any more questions, listen. Here's the deal. If yeah. there's any more questions, you can always call. You know, we can always set this back up. This ain't hard. Man. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. All right. Right, so, right. And uh, anything else? I'll, I'll just hit you on questions. And oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, yeah. One hundred. Oh, yeah. All, the, all love, man. You stay safe and keep you keep too, go, 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 going. Take me That's out. Try to turn our best. Both of us are. All yeah, right. Yeah, real talk. All right. Appreciate it, man. Peace. Okay. Peace. I'm out.